Good morning, Charlie here with Red Summit RF. Thank you for joining me today. If you are just joining this channel, please consider subscribing below and hitting the bell so that you could be notified every time I upload a new video. Well, today I'm going to be doing something a little different. I am uh, producing a video that's not quite the same niche as what I've normally done. I'm going to be filming the construction and the uh, tuning of a half square antenna coming up. Just like the name implies, the antenna is the sh in the shape of a half square. It has a horizontal section, which is here, with two vertical legs here and here. There is a feed point into one of the two corners, right here, for example. And that feed point will have a coax cable that will kind of go off away from the leg and then it'll come on down to the radio. From the feed point, one leg of the antenna extends vertically for one quarter of a wavelength of the frequency it's tuned to. So one quarter wave. From that same feed point, the other leg extends horizontally for about a half of the frequency wavelength one half wave and then it turns 90 degrees and extends another one quarter of a wavelength down the other side. Both corners of the half square are held in place by some side of some sort of fastener, usually a rope, to calculate the length of each section of the antenna, I first determined what I wanted the resonant frequency to be. I like to chase DX on 20 meters CW, so I chose a frequency of 14.063 megahertz. That's the resonant frequency I wanted for this antenna. For the length of the horizontal section, I divided 500 and two by that uh, desired resonant frequency of 14.063. It turns out that that is equivalent to 35.7 feet. Then I uh, took the vertical sections and divided them by 249 divided by 14.063, over here, 249, divided by 12.06, sorry, 14.063. Turns out that that uh, length comes to 17, let me do that again, 17.7 feet on both of these, 17.7. So remember that this is the feed point right here, feed point. So this section will remain 17.7 feet and that comes out to 17 point or sorry 17 feet and 8 and uh, 3 eighths inches. This section here this 35.7 feet uh, becomes 35 feet and uh, eight inches, eight and three eighths inches. And then the same, the same measurement here is here, so it'll be 17 feet and eight and three, three eighths inches. So the length of this section of antenna from the feed line is an obvious 17.7. This length extends the entire way from the feed point, takes a 90 degree turn and comes down, so what we have here is we have 35.7 plus 17.7 and so that equals 53.4 feet. So that is from here to no to here. This whole thing so for my supplies, I have the following. 
26 gauge wire. I have 100 feet of that. RG174 coax. I have 50 feet of that. A BNC connector. Some, some uh, kite string winders. And uh, some sort of homebrew insulators, which I'll show you how to make a little later. The first step will be fabricate the insulators that hold the antenna together. And the second step I'll do is I'll cut uh, two lengths of 26 gauge wire. One of the lengths will be 18.7 feet and the other will be 54.4 feet. So I'm leaving a, about a foot on each vertical leg so that I can trim and tune the antenna. Then I'll cut a length of uh, RG174 coax to 26 feet. Next, I'll thread the wire and the coax into the appropriate insulator. I'll strip out the wires and the coax, and then I'll solder each of the two legs to the uh, coax. Next, I'll attach a BNC connector to the e other end of the coax cable, and then uh, after that, I'll uh, add the uh, corner insulator on the other corner so that it measures exactly 35.7 feet from the end point. So that's that top horizontal section uh, where that uh, 90 degree turn is. That's where, what I use an insulator for to make that 90 degree turn. And so from the uh, feed point, 35.7 feet to, to that uh, 90 degree turn. And lastly, I'll take the antenna to the field for tuning. So the first thing is, uh, I've, already, I've already constructed part of it, but this here is a, uh, is a cutting board that I got from Walmart for a couple bucks I guess. I use this cutting board to uh, construct the insulators for my uh, antenna. So I have a piece here. I have uh, a rough piece of what I want to use for an insulator. What I do is I round the edges. So I have kind of a rough uh, little it's not edges anymore on this. Okay, so roughly that's kind of how I construct my um, my uh, insulators for for my antennas. This piece right here, uh, it'll hang like this, and uh, the the wire will come across here. the The perpendicular will come up. The horizontal will go over here. It'll form a square and hang from a tree like this. And then the wire that's coming down, I have this where I'll thread the wire through. There's a hole here in the bottom so that. If I need to, I can tie it down if it's windy, but uh, I think just the, the light weight of this will hold that uh, the antenna in place. So I'm going to... Greetings, Charlie Brown. <laughs> Greetings. Hi. We're getting set up for Russ here. Russ, which stands for? Radios Under Sunshade. Used to be called Radio in the Park, but now it's a, uh, a tribute to one of the founders whose name was Russ. And so uh, it's now been changed to RUSS for radios under sunshades uh, to remember one of the founders of the uh, radio in the park event. Cool. So we've got that and we're getting some things set up here. All right, and I'm going to, uh, as I mentioned before, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be uh, tuning my antenna. Good, <laughs> good. All right, guys. I'll come down at this end too, by the way. This is some good stuff. 
what you've got over here. This is a windling setup. Oh yeah. This is we're gonna we're gonna be doing peer-to-peer uh, -peer windlink email with K7NZ who was setting up in uh, Apache Junction. And uh, so he's we both are windlink capable via the windlink system. However, we haven't done peer-to-peer, -peer. so this is what we're gonna do: direct to each other, sending email. This uh, little laptop is, is hosting the uh, Winlink software, the client software. We're going to be using a signal link and a very low cost $60, $70 Chinese radio for VHF, UHF, VHF simplex is what we're going to be using. The Chinese revolutionized the world, didn't they? <laughs> well, in my hobby, they, they are very acceptable. Yeah, cool. All right, I'm gonna go grab my stuff then and... Yeah. Ooh, whose is this? Yeah, it's just all, everything all the way out. So that's all that's the way uh, okay. one of De and Dennis's that's lower end. <laughs> Dennis, is this your box? Right. Yes. He wants to know if that's your uh, go box. Yeah, that's uh, one of them. That's nice. Uh, okay, so I have the uh, antenna strung out along with the with a tape measure and uh, you can see here uh, I'll I'll move this up over here so it I can measure all along here and uh, I'm going all the way down here all the way down here right around in here somewhere 35 something I said is where I'll uh, I'll uh, make the corner what I have here is I've got this uh, wire threaded through now and if you see it measures to 35 and right at the corner is eight inches and eight and well eight and, and uh, three eighths of an inch i am going to string up some rope and get this in the air and then start trimming from there so we got some trees here i think that's a good branch right there to hang one end from and then I don't know, maybe over there somewhere is another one. Have the half square up now. You can see the bottom is just hanging by the uh, plastic insulator. And up in the tree, and then the feed line comes down. Uh, you might not be able to follow that line, but it uh, goes all the way over to here. And comes down. Goes up there, comes down to this leg. What? Tell me your name. Ryan. I'm Ryan. Ryan. Well, you, there you go. Ryan's helping me with uh, getting this antenna tuned. We're ready to go. Yeah, it's right now we're at uh, 13172. It looks like is where it's resonant. So we're going to cut off quite a bit here and see if we can get it closer to uh, 14063. Uh, so. Let's do that. So I don't know how much we should cut off here. So okay, now we uh, cut six inches off here. Let's turn the dial and see what happens. All right, six inches got us 0.2 megahertz closer. All right, so we're 13,798. Now we're gonna go, well, didn't go much that time. Uh, guess we'll, well, we're getting close, right in there, yeah. I guess it kind of really depends on how far up off the ground you are. I'm at 14,037. Uh, You're at 14,037? Yeah. Oh, 47, 60, huh. yeah, we're, it's right about there. I, I think, think you're gonna get much more out of trimming. No, I don't think so. I think we're there. Okay. Or I think we're uh, where we need to be. 
Should we uh, should we get on the radio and try it? Why not? All right. That's clear. What's the frequency there? 14340. Kilo 6 Hotel Zulu Romeo. Kilo 6 Hotel Zulu Romeo. November Juliet 7. Victor, over. Kilo 6 Hotel Zulu Romeo. November Juliet 7. Victor, over. Alright, he can't hear me, so I'm gonna go to CW here real quick and see if I can catch something on CW. <laughs> Well, I consider today a success. I have a 20 meter half square antenna that I can take to chase DX when I go portable now. A quick shout out to the JerryNet and in particular Adam K6ARK for providing useful information on this antenna. The antenna is tuned to a little under 1 to 1.5 SWR in the CW portion of the 20 meter band. And also in the uh, sideband portion, it's tuned to around 1 to 2, a little under 1 to 2, so it should function there as well. I tried to make a couple of quick contacts with my FT817 5 watt radio, but uh, was unsuccessful, primarily because I didn't have a lot of time and had to wrap things up after only a couple of attempts. But I'll make uh, another video at some point where I feature the uh, performance of this antenna and show you how it works. Once again, thanks for joining me and 73.